Have you ever watched something expecting just another routine update and instead walked away feeling like you've just witnessed a turning point? That's exactly what happened during the recent Aptera livestream. What was supposed to be a simple technical showcase unfolded into one of the clearest glimpses yet into Aptera's progress, its challenges, and most importantly, its future direction. And the more I listened, the more I realized this wasn't just an update, it was a quiet but powerful shift that could redefine what we expect from their first production run. The live stream felt different from the beginning, unscripted, relaxed, and oddly intimate, almost like being invited behind the curtain during a pivotal moment. Engineers wandered in and out, each sharing pieces of the larger puzzle, and you could almost feel their excitement. What struck me most wasn't just their technical expertise, but the sense of confidence radiating through all the small details they showcased. It left me feeling unusually hopeful, and honestly, more optimistic about Aptera's position than I've been in a long time. They began with a look at PI-1, including both the wiring mule in the exploded model originally seen at the Paris Composites event. But now, instead of just a display piece, it carried the full solar assembly. Seeing the panel integrated, lightweight, elegantly bonded, and capable of generating meaningful daily range made it feel less like a concept and more like a machine ready for the real world. Even standing still, the shape and engineering behind the shell practically explained themselves. What fascinated me most was how many little things they highlighted. Pass-throughs, grommet placements, connection routing, the tiny details that never make headlines but quietly determine whether a vehicle will be a joy to build or an endless struggle. All these nuances painted a picture of a team obsessively refining every inch of their product. But then came the moment many have been waiting for, the drivetrain discussion, the one topic surrounded by speculation, frustration, hope, and rumor. And what the engineer said it confirmed something that's been quietly building for months. Aptera is moving forward with a proven drivetrain, something that can be mass-produced quickly, validated efficiently, and sourced reliably, something they can install into vehicles without waiting for exotic, still-developing technologies to mature. And while they emphasize that in-wheel motors remain an important part of their long-term roadmap, the message was unmistakably clear. The first production vehicles will not use them. Hearing that felt like the air shifted, not in a disappointing way, more like the moment in a story when a character finally chooses the path that gets them to the finish line instead of the one that looks ideal on paper. The focus now is simple. Get vehicles on the road quickly, using hardware with a track record, proven reliability, immediate scalability. And based on the hints dropped, this drivetrain comes from a major manufacturer known for durability and efficiency. A partnership announcement is apparently on the horizon. From everything said, it appears the initial Aptera will likely rely on an inboard motor layout, potentially front-wheel drive, before evolving toward a system that incorporates in-wheel motors for future configurations, especially those requiring rear-wheel functionality. The message was unambiguous. The first production push is about pragmatism, speed, and trustable components. And honestly, that clarity was refreshing. From there, the live stream shifted into an avalanche of technical insights. For instance, we finally learned what role Cherry Automotive plays in the vehicle's development. They provide the air handler system, a compact, lightweight, remarkably efficient component that feels tailor-made for Aptera's minimalistic interior volume. That revelation alone cleared up months of speculation, and it underscored how Aptera is choosing partners based not on brand appeal, but on functional engineering value. Then came a deep dive into the wiring and connector decisions. At first glance, the boards looked unusual, single wire to board connectors rather than multi-wire plugs. It raised questions about assembly time, labor requirements, and long-term practicality, but the explanation that followed was incredibly enlightening. These aren't hand-soldered points or fragile consumer-grade pins. They're automotive-grade wire-to-board connectors designed for decades of vibration resistance. They're robot-applied, ultra-reliable, lightweight, and engineered to eliminate one of the most common failure points in modern vehicles, the connectors themselves. 
The fewer bulky connectors, the fewer lifetime issues. The boards will eventually be potted and environmentally protected, making them even more robust. It's these little engineering decisions that quietly shape the reliability and longevity of a machine. Hearing the team explain the rationale behind them made it clear how much thought has gone into reducing errors, weight, and failure modes. Even the discussion around the labor required to insert each wire individually opened a window into Aptera's unique engineering priorities, trade-offs between optimization, manufacturability, cost, and durability. The engineers also reveal the surprise. The radiator location isn't up front, as many, including me, had assumed. Instead, it's positioned at the rear of the vehicle, pulling air through in a way that aligns with Aptera's aerodynamic philosophy. This one detail alone suggests that several long-held assumptions about the airflow design were incomplete. Then we shifted into one of the most intriguing segments, zonal architecture. Aptera uses a centralized computing system with lightweight controllers distributed throughout the vehicle. Each zone, rear, doors, wheel pants, overhead console, underbody, houses a small, simple unit that commands the nearby actuators and sensors. Instead of one massive, complex harness snaking through the entire vehicle, signals travel short, efficient paths to their local controllers. This dramatically reduces wiring length, complexity, and weight. They reveal that the vehicle uses 16 custom circuit boards, 10 of which serve as zonal controllers. The overhead unit even manages the microphone, hazard button, brake light, and brightness controls for the rear view screen. Another controller handles rear lighting and sensors. Others govern thermal management and cooling. Hearing this breakdown gives a clearer sense of how Aptera is intentionally designing not just a vehicle, but a lightweight electrical ecosystem optimized for efficiency. One of the cleverest features described was the multi-stage low power system. When the vehicle is charging from solar or plugged in, it only energizes essential components, preventing unnecessary energy waste. If the vehicle senses no occupants nearby, systems like door sensors or interior logic units stay dormant. More solar energy goes directly into the battery instead of being lost to idle electronics. It's a small detail with a massive cumulative impact. Throughout the live stream, more engineers appeared, several of whom the public had never seen before. Seeing them not only gave a sense of scale to the team, but also reinforced how many specialized roles are working simultaneously behind the scenes. From layout experts to software developers to harness designers, it became obvious that Aptera's electrical program has grown significantly. We even learned who refined the knock-knock entry feature, a small but memorable part of Aptera's identity she explained how the concept emerged and how the system architecture allows it to function seamlessly with the zonal controllers. Hearing that directly from the engineer who made it work gave the feature new life. There were even subtle clues suggesting that the production PCBs may look different from the test units on camera. These boards were solder samples, safe for handling, while the real ones will likely include protective coatings, sealed connectors, and embedded reinforcements. It makes sense that what we saw was only a simplified preview of the production-ready hardware. Toward the end, the discussion turned to the harness installation process. We learned that wiring is installed after the completed body arrives from Italy. High voltage, low voltage, solar, battery, subwoofer, everything gets integrated on site, with the harness threaded between panels at specific build stages. The workflow suggested a carefully choreographed manufacturing sequence designed to minimize errors in streamline assembly. By the time the live stream wound down, it felt like we had been given a rare, almost unfiltered glimpse into Aptera's engineering heart. Not just glossy marketing lines, but real, evolving technical decisions, real trade-offs, real progress, and real people behind the work. The most striking part was the combination of transparency and confidence, even when revealing that some early assumptions, like in-wheel motors for first production, would not come to fruition. The explanation was grounded, logical, and future-focused. Instead of disappointment, the update created trust. It showed that Aptera's team is prioritizing manufacturability and reliability above theoretical perfection, and that's exactly what a company on the brink of production should be doing. 
there was so much more to dig into that continuing it all in one sitting felt impossible, and the conversation naturally ended with the promise of more updates to come. But even just this segment carried enough insight to reshape how we view Aptera's next steps. It wasn't just a status report, it was a roadmap, a signal, and a reminder of how much thought is going into every decision behind this radically efficient vehicle.